Today we're gonna bring you along as I do some preventative maintenance to my F30 335. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. If you could tell in my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather today, but you know what? So is my car. So we have a first aid kit. You see, my car was diagnosed with SBS, shaky belt syndrome. So today, we're gonna show you how to re replace your accessory belt, your tensioner, and your pulley. So as you may know, most belts are made of rubber and just naturally over time, they start to deteriorate. Now my car has about 52-ish thousand miles on it. I haven't read it in a little while. And it's just generally time to do this anyway. Um, actually, when Tommy had my car the other day, we installed a couple parts in his car and we just swapped cars. He noticed that my, my tensioner was actually moving quite a bit more than normal. Now on my F80, it's pretty rock solid but on this car, it had a little bit of movement. We have a little clip, we'll show you. It might be really hard to tell from the video, but just to give you a general sense. And as you'd expect, BMW knows that this is something that needs to be replaced every once in a while, so they actually sell this kit, which we're gonna have linked down below in the description. So it has your idler pulley, it has your tensioner, it has a new tensioner bolt, and it also has the correct belt. Now the process is very easy, and if you haven't done this before, it's pretty hard to mess up. So it's definitely a good thing to do yourself, and you can save a lot of money, opposed to getting it done at the dealer. First part of the process is to remove your intake. We've done this in a lot of videos. If you're not really sure how to do it, we'll have a video in more description linked up above. So now that we have our intake off, we can continue with the removal of the old belt and then also the installation of the new parts as well. Now, the most important thing at this stage is to note where the belt is routed along. So you can see it goes over this one, it goes under the, the tensioner, it goes over the alternator and then down and around. So what I would recommend at this stage is if you have your cell phone, take a couple pictures or if you're an artist like I am, you can sketch an amazing drawing um, so that you remember exactly which way the belt goes. Now for this next part, you are going to need a T60 Torx bit. So it is a massive Torx bit. And what we're going to do is we are going to detension the tensioner. As you can see on our new tensioner, it comes with this little steel pin to just keep the tension off so you can install it with ease. Now, I don't have a second one of these, but what I do have is a drill bit that is roughly the same size. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your T60, you're gonna put it in that spot right there, and you're going to pull it like you're tightening it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your little piece of steel or a drill bit, you're gonna put it through this hole so that it lines up with this little notch right there so it catches. Once you've done that, it's safe to then remove the old belt. So, it's gonna be really hard to see, but at this time, let's, let's do this. Now, one thing that you might wanna do is you might want to release your coolant line here just so we can wiggle it out of the way ever so slightly. I'm gonna take my massive T60 here, and if you can see it, the hole is up here, and we have to line it up with up here. So I'll point to it with the, with the drill bit. The hole we need to stick this in is right over here, and then it has to catch on this little groove right there. Okay, so you're gonna push that over like that. We're gonna slide our drill bit in. And just be careful because, especially if you're using a new drill bit like we are, it's very sharp and you don't wanna cut yourself. Now that we've done that, we can start to remove our old belt. So I'm just gonna pull it off of our alternator over here. And it's normal that these are very tight, even detensioned. Okay, just like that. Now, I can also pull it off the bottom here. We'll just pull this out all together. 
boom, there's our old belt. Now looking at the belt, it actually doesn't look all that bad, but since we have a new one, we're just gonna use it anyway. Now, something to note is if you ever wanna use your drill bit again, we need to detension this. Or we need to apply the tension, I guess, technically. So let's pull that back up. We'll slip this out and then we will release it. If you forget to take this out, you're gonna have a crazy amount of tension in your favorite drill bit. So make sure you do it while it's still on the car because once it's off, it's very difficult to do. So now what we're going to do is we are going to remove that middle bolt that holds our tensioner on and it's held in by an E12, which is a, a reverse or external Torx. I'm just gonna put this on here. Loosen that up. Pull my ratchet off for a little more room. A little bit of a tight squeeze in here. And then don't drop it once you uh, get it fully loose. Now with the new kit, it includes a new bolt, so none of this is reused. Okay, pull that out completely. Pull that guy out. There you go. So when we, when we feel the pulley, um, if we move it sideways, it has a, a little bit of play. Um, with the new one, there's no play whatsoever. Um, so I'm glad we did this, and again, it's just preventative maintenance anyway. Was it gonna die on me tomorrow? Probably not, but it's always good to be ahead of the curve and not get stuck anywhere. Now it's time to install the new tensioner. When you put it in, this piece of metal right here on this little tab is going to be underneath this little notch right here. So that's what's gonna make sure that the tensioner stays in place. It's gonna go in like that. And then as you wiggle it around, it, it should be solid. It shouldn't be going anywhere. And you can take your bolt, start to hand thread it in. Then once you've hand tightened it, you're going to torque it down to 38 Newton meters. Again with that E12. Perfect. So now that we've done that, we are going to get this idler pulley, which is the one right down here. Uh, it's pretty hard to miss because it's the only one that looks like what came with the kit. Um, so first off, I forgot to show you something. So these actually come with these little caps on it. So when you first look at it, it's gonna look like this. All you need to do is take a pick tool and just pop it off. And then you're going to be able to see the T50. So take a T50, pop it in there, and then you're just gonna loosen that. Just be careful not to bust your knuckles. And this is gonna come out as one piece. It, the bolt doesn't come out separate. Now you can take your idler pulley. Now if you're looking up torque specs on whatnot in a, a test document, it's, um, you'll see it called deflection pulley. So I'm just gonna thread this in like that. It's kind of awkward because you have to spin to tighten the bolt. If you're gonna do it by hand, you have to spin this part. If you just spin this, it doesn't really do anything, so. A little awkward. And then what we're gonna do, uh, we're going to tighten this down to 60 Newton meters. The other one was less, but this one for whatever reason is more. Okay. Now we're going to do is we are going to install our new belt. And I like to do this in the reverse order that we took it off. So we'll get it around the, the big guy first here. And you just wanna make sure that all of your grooves are lining up. Just gonna make sure that everything is installed correctly. And um, typically, if you have a smooth surface, it'll go against a smooth surface like this. And if you have a ridged section, it's gonna go against the ridge. So it's normally pretty easy to identify what side of the belt you should be using. And always make sure it's sitting perfectly flat. So right there, it wasn't sitting perfectly flat on me. And it was about to give me a huge headache if I would have left it go like that. Okay, so then I need to go around. We're gonna start up here. And then we took this part off first. We're gonna change it up just a little bit. And we're gonna go around this one here.
Make sure all the grooves are lined up. And then we're going to go around the plastic down there. So this way the grooves shouldn't be fighting us as we try to slip this on. Okay, and assuming everything is sitting nice and flat, everything should go on pretty easily. Um, I was hung up initially on the other side of this, so a, a good idea is to actually reach down and around and just feel to make sure that the belt is completely in place. Everything's lined up here on the alternator, over here, and then everything else over here is sitting really nice. So at this time, what you can do is you can take your T60 one more time. You wanna release the pressure and pull that little pin out and then start to put that back. At this part of the process, we're going to put our intake in, tighten everything up, then we'll start the car to check out that new smooth idle. So at this point in the process, let's start the car and take a look at our tensioner and see if we calm down that wobbliness. So as you just saw, this is a very, very simple job. The hardest part is taking out the intake. So if you have some Torx bits, E-Torx, a basic socket set and a torque wrench, you can take on this job and it doesn't really take all that much time. So as you saw, before we had a good amount of wobble and after it really helped tighten it up. Now you are still going to have a little bit of wobble because it is constantly tensioning the belt and everything is moving. So it's not going to be perfectly solid, but just so you know, if, if you have a little bit of wobble from the beginning, it doesn't mean that yours is necessarily bad. So if you see any wobble, you don't have to run out and buy one of these or anything. But if you're around 50,000 miles or so, it's a good idea to change this along with the belt or if you're at 100,000, 150, especially as these cars start to get older. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. For all the tools and parts we used in today's video, we're gonna have them linked below for you. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day. So something we forgot to put, it's not really super essential, um, but there's a little plastic cover. So I'm just gonna do it with the intake. In. Um, you just line it up and then you just clip it in place like that. It just keeps all the dirt and debris out of the bolt and the bearing, and we're good to go.